Hello again. I dare say that some viewers in this country have young relatives who are finding it hard to find somewhere decent to live. Through Serco, the government is approaching all landlords and offering them wonderful terms if they will offer to rent their properties to asylum seekers. There are tens of thousands of such people, of course, in hotels at the moment, and this is bad publicity for the government. So they're very keen to clear those hotels out and send all the people to private flats and houses. It need hardly be said that this is having the effect of creating a terrible shortage of affordable accommodation for those who do not happen to be refugees or asylum seekers. In other words, our sons, daughters, nephews, nieces and grandchildren. As any ordinary person knows, the situation is dire and getting worse all the time. The hope to which some of these unhappy people cling is that if they can't find private uh, rented accommodation, they'll be able to obtain social housing, either from a housing association or their local authority. Unfortunately, here too, the outlook is growing ever grimmer. Take Shropshire, which is a county in the north of England on the Welsh border. They've been numbered with a bunch of Ukrainians, some of those invited here by the government last year. They also have a bunch of Afghans, also invited by the government. Because there's difficulty in finding anywhere for these folk to live, Shropshire have decided to spend over £7 million building them some new houses. It really does sound almost incredible in this day and age that such a thing should be contemplated. But there you are. There are an awful lot of English people living in Shropshire who could do very nicely if they could only be given a council house. But Shropshire has decided only to build new ones for refugees. Like many local authorities, of course, Shropshire are finding it hard to cope with the results of government policy, which seems to be to invite as many refugees and asylum seekers to come and live in this country as possible. Because it's so far from London, Shropshire is a popular place to dump people out of sight. In the description to this video, I give links to news items about both the new houses to be built for the refugees and also the sending of unaccompanied children who are refugees to Shropshire. The problems that this dispersal of refugees and illegal immigrants to various small English towns is causing really a scandal. Towns like Stoke-on-Trent have been bearing the brunt of this for a while, but it's now spreading increasingly to every small town, even quiet places on the south coast like Bournemouth. I had occasion to visit a seaside town in southern England yesterday and saw this in practice. I passed a children's playground by a little garden and noticed that it was occupied by a group of young men in their twenties or, I imagine, Middle Eastern origin. They were not doing anything other than sitting on the swings and climbing frames, smoking, talking and spitting on the ground. But their presence alone would certainly deter any mother with young children from using that little playground. They clearly had nowhere to go and nothing to do, probably no money, and so it must have seemed to them a reasonable place for them to hang out. By their very presence, though, they changed the atmosphere of the garden and playground, ensuring that families would give it a wide berth. This is a small example of what is being seen now all over England. It is almost as though a determined and planned effort is being made to change the nature of our country, while at the same time ensuring also that anybody who draws attention to what is going on, let alone objects to it, can be seen as a far-right extremist.